Hi there, welcome to the new video. So today we'll be going through this very classic paper which is titled as Text Rank, Bringing Order into Text by researchers from University of North Texas. So it's a pretty old paper but I still feel it's worth reading it because this is one of the papers that you'll definitely find as a baseline method in almost all the papers in the summarization domain. So also in my videos where I've talked about summarization methods, I've constantly referred to this algorithm. So I feel it's better to explain the paper first and reference it back when I make more videos about summarization in the future. So let's get started. Okay, so talking about the text rank model, the graph based ranking algorithms are essentially a way to decide the importance of a vertex within a graph based on a global information recursively drawn from the entire graph. And the way they propagate information to what is important and what is not is what we call as voting or recommendation. So the entire idea is let's consider you have four web pages W1, W2, W3, and W4. They are somehow connected in some format. Let's consider directed graph for now, but this will work for undirected graph as well. So here the arrow would represent if there is a link from source page to a destination page, which means there's a link to W1 page from W2. That's why you can see the arrow going from W2 to W1. And similarly, there will be a link in W1 that goes to W3. That's why you see an arrow from W1 to W3. So this is how you create this voting or recommendation based web graph where each of the nodes are web pages. So that's what they have written. The importance of a vertex is based on the global information. So let's say if we want to know how important is W4, we can see that a vote is casted from W3. Let's call it V1. And there was already a vote casted from W1 to W3. Let's call it V2. And not only that, W2 also casts a vote to W1. Let's call it W3. So you can easily see a recursion being formed to how things would propagate from one end to another. So that's why they have used the word global information. So higher the number of votes that are cast from a vertex, higher the importance for a vertex. Okay, so this is same as if you see W4 in this case, it's too messy, let me just clear it out. So if you see W4, there are three edges that are incoming to this node. So if for simplicity, if we consider each edge is giving a vote one, so three votes are being casted to W4, which can be seen as a signal of importance. And similarly, you can calculate for all of the nodes. So for example, for this graph, we can see W4 is having the highest value. Okay. Not only that, the score that you associate with the vertex is determined based on the votes that are cast for it and the score for the vertices that cast these votes. So for W4, there are three edges that are coming into W4. So let's consider three as one of the factors for that vote and rest. It will also depend on what was the score for W1, W2 and W3. So the value of the casted vote from each of the vertices could be some multiplication of the score of the node that is casting the vote and the value of the vote that it casts. So for example, in this case, it could be W1 into alpha 1. If alpha 1 is what it casts, W2 cross alpha 2, W3 cross alpha 3. So you sum all of this up. This could be one of the voting schemes that we use and give it to W4. So this is actually good because you can think of situations where people can create multiple spam websites and use those websites to give all of the votes for a certain page. So ideally we would not want that website to come up in the search results in the Google search. So that's why some scoring mechanism around who is casting the vote is also taken into the consideration while calculating the final score for the destination node. Okay. So now we talk about the page rank formula. Let G be the graph that has V vertex and E edges. It's a directed graph. I and VI is the in degree for a vertex I and out VI is the out degree for the vertex I. So the final score that you give for every vertex is given by this formula, where D is the damping factor. A usual value of the damping factor is 0.8. And its role in the formula is to give at least some score to the sinking pages or the newly added pages. So what does it mean? So let's consider you have n pages in the entire web. And now if I write a new blog and I publish it on the web and I link it to let's say n by two number of pages that are there on the web. So let's call my blog as B1. So these are all the outlinks that I create. So now if you notice the problem, since my blog will be really new, none of the pages that were already existing in the web will be casting a vote back to my blog. So then the question is, how do we take care of the newer notes that get made up every day in the web? So that's where the damping factor comes into the play. So if we calculate score for this node, you can see you're doing a summation over all the end degrees for this node. So as I already mentioned, this is the newer page on the web. So there will be no end degree. So this goes as zero. So there is no summation that you will be doing, which means anything after this plus results to zero. So now you're only left with this term, 
which is 1 minus 0 0.8 so 0 0.2 is the initial score that we give by default to any newer page that gets added at any day so you can also think this as a initialization that you do for any new page so yeah that is the idea for the damping factor so now let's calculate page rank for certain node in a graph let me just clear it out so let's say we have four nodes so w2 would cast a vote to w1 it would cast a vote to w4 w3 casts a vote to w2 and w4 and similarly w1 would cast a vote to w3 and w3 would also cast a vote to w1 so let's say this is the graph structure that we have among the web pages so if you want to calculate let's say page rank for the node w2 so s of w2 would be nothing but 1 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times now we want to do a weighted sum over all the n degrees of this node so there's just one n degree for this which is w3 so for that we'll add s of w3 whatever is the score for that node initially divided by out degree of the node w3 that was casting the vote so as we can see out degree is 3 because it is casting vote to w2 w1 and w4 so we divide by 3 so this will be the score that we get for node w2 and as you can imagine once you have for node w2 the score for the node w1 will be updated accordingly because now w2 has already changed so this way it would update all of the scores recursively until the score doesn't change much so you'll have some deviation if it doesn't change let's say beyond 0.01 so you have kind of reached the equilibrium and you stop your formulation and the scores that you get at the end are the final set of scores which we call as page rank score which kind of symbolizes the importance of every node in the graph or you can think of every web page on the web so this is the entire idea behind page rank so let's move further so similarly in this formula which is a bit modified version of the original page rank that considers custom weights that you can give to the edges so initially if you saw we just considered every weight to be one and we divided by one by three in this case because w3 was casting to three different vertices but it could very much happen that w3 might cast a little greater vote to w4 compared to w2 so this weighing mechanism gives you that customization okay so with this background let's talk about the main contribution of the paper now where they represent a text as a graph so let's see how to do it so they follow these set of four rules to convert text as a node in a graph and then later on apply some ranking mechanism over there so the idea is to identify the text unit that best define the task at hand and add them as vertices in the graph so in this paper they talk about two use cases one is keyword extraction and another is sentence ranking or sentence extraction which can be seen as an extractive summarization problem so for keywords you can think of having phrases or maybe unigrams as a node in the graph and for the second task which is extractive summarization you can think of having entire sentence as a node in that graph then you identify the relations that connect such text unit and use these relations to draw edges between the vertices okay so in keyword extraction you can think of some formulation maybe levenstein distance that captures syntactic similarity between the two words so that can be added as one of the edge weights over there in sentence extraction where you have sentence as the nodes you can think of doing some kind of textual similarity maybe word embedding and then doing a cosine similarity you get a score between zero and one so that can be one of the weights that you can put on that edge so once you have this done you iterate the graph based ranking algorithm until the convergence which means the value of the nodes the scores that you assign via page rank doesn't change much and is within certain bounds so if that is happening then you stop the algorithm and as the last tip you sort the vertices by the final score so as we just discussed those scores are a symbolism of how important that node is so sorting them out maybe by descending order would rank all the nodes from most important to least important so from top then you can sample top k nodes and those are your final output for the entire task so yeah this is the entire methodology that they follow for solving both of the tasks that they have proposed so let's dive into keyword extraction task so in keyword extraction we would expect the end results to be words or phrases that are representative of the given natural text so the pipeline that the authors propose looks like you have a document d that has n number of sentences let's say you concatenate all those sentences and you have one large text chunk then you apply a syntactic filter let's call it sf that would do a filtering of nouns and adjectives so again these are empirically derived and authors found nouns and adjectives to be giving better keywords so now you have nouns and adjectives from the large chunk of text so now these are your possible nodes in that graph that you want to create 
Now the question is how do you add edges between these nodes? So for this authors use the concept of co-occurrence windows. They would have a window size of let's say 10 words which should be I guess more or less a length of a sentence and you add edge among all the nouns and adjectives that occur in that window. And similarly then you propagate to the next window of 10 words and you add edges among the words that are nouns and adjectives in that respective window. So that way you create your co-occurrence graph based on certain window size. So at this point you have your graph created. You have nodes which are words that are nouns and adjectives and the relations or the edges that you make are based on the context that they share that is defined by a window. Then you apply the ranking algorithm. They use page rank and once it has converged, you will have scores assigned to all the nodes in that graph. They sample top K nodes from there and apply a post processing step. So now let's understand this through an example as well. So this is the document D that I was talking about that has many sentences. You apply a syntactic filter on this, you get nouns and adjectives and you create a graph out of it. And the edges that you see that are connecting these words are based on the windowing concept. So a thing to notice over here is all the nodes that we have in the graph are unigrams. So the post processing step that the authors have defined takes care of merging multiple unigrams and making a proper phrase out of it. So let's see to what that post processing step is. During post processing, all the lexical units selected as potential keywords by the text rank algorithm are marked in the text and sequence of adjacent keywords are collapsed into multi-word keyword. Okay, so for example, if the text was MATLAB code for plotting ambiguity functions, if MATLAB and code were part of the keywords at a unigram level, then you would run a keyword spotter back to the original text and you'll find MATLAB and code are occurring adsent to each other in the original text. So if this condition holds true, then you collapse both the keywords into a single keyword. And finally, you'll have MATLAB code as one final keyword instead of having two keywords, MATLAB and code. So yeah, this was the entire algorithm to how do they apply a graph based ranking algorithm for keyword extraction. So these are some of the results. As we can see, the post processing step works fine. And we are able to get multi word phrases and the quality of the keywords is also good and is comparable to the human iterators. Okay, so now let's talk about the summarization. So unlike keyword extraction, where we had words as the nodes in the graph, for the summarization purpose, we represent the entire sentence of the text as a vertex in that graph. The pipeline still remains the same. You have a document D, you extract all the sentences. Let's say there were 10 sentences. So we'll create a graph G that will have 10 number of nodes where each of the node is a sentence. We'll see to how do we connect sentence among each other. But let's consider we have that method for now. Then we evaluate page rank score for all the nodes in that graph. We sort the sentences in descending order and we pick top k sentences as a representative summary. So now let's see to the formulation and the logic behind adding an edge between two sentences. So let's consider we have two sentences SI and SJ and both have NI number of words. So this would be the representation of a sentence. The similarity between two sentences is nothing but the word overlap. How many words are common between two sentences which you normalize by the log of the length of both the sentences. So yeah, this would be the score that you give to every edge for any two sentences S1 and S2. Other metrics that you can think of as putting on the edge weight could be maybe semantic similarity where you use some pre-trained model to get the sentence representation and apply cosine similarity over there. Or you could even go around in thinking in a hybrid mode of syntactic and semantic similarity. Again, this all depends on the use case and the kind of results that you're expecting at the end of the day. Also one thing to notice, here we have weights associated with all of the edges, unlike the keyword extraction that didn't add any specific weight that we had set. So over here, we'll apply the weighted version of the page rank. So yeah, I guess now we are done with the paper. So yeah, as I mentioned, it was a long due read for me because I have been mentioning this paper a lot in my summarization playlist. If you have not seen that playlist, I'll put that playlist in the i button. Feel free to check it out and share it across. So yeah, having said that, if you like my content and what I do, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.